By now, we all know the disappointing news that we won't be getting the new Land Cruiser here in the United States, but that doesn't mean that we won't get to enjoy a giant off-roading beast from the Toyota family. And that's because Lexus will continue to sell its version of the Land Cruiser in the US. My name is Omar, and this is the 2021 Lexus LX. Now, before I even get started, if you're enjoying my content, make sure you hit that like button because it feeds the algorithm gods. The current Lexus LX has been around since 2016 with very, very minor updates. And that seems to be the case with most Lexus models. They are very slow when it comes to adopting new tech and luxury features. Nonetheless, we are finally starting to see things like a touchscreen display and Apple CarPlay on some 2021 model years. But the Lexus LX that I'm testing here is one of the few models that is falling behind times. You don't have a touchscreen display or any smartphone connectivity. That said, a new Lexus LX is on the way and it will be based on the new Toyota Land Cruiser that won't be sold here in the United States. And while the new Lexus LX will probably get some more luxury and some more tech, what it won't get is a 5.7 liter V8 that's in the current model. That will most likely be swapped out for a twin turbo V6 that you see in the new Land Cruiser and also in the new Tundra. So this is really the last time that you'll see an LX with a naturally aspirated V8. That said, let's talk about how the current Lexus LX drives. It is very nice, very comfortable, and very, very smooth. I've said this probably a million times before, but Lexus has one of the smoothest ride qualities of any luxury brand by far. This thing is so comfortable that even when you pop it into a comfort mode that it has, you don't really feel a difference, but this thing does weigh 6,000 pounds, so it is definitely very heavy, and you feel it while driving around town. I do wish that it had some more get up and go characteristics, but I'm not gonna completely knock it for that since people buying these giant SUVs don't really care about performance. That said, the current Lexus LX is really starting to fall behind its competitors. Lexus only sells about 4,500 units of the LX on an annual basis, which is way behind its competitors like the BMW X7, the Cadillac Escalade, the Lincoln Navigator, the Mercedes-Benz GLS, and even behind the Infiniti QX80. So should you consider taking a look at the Lexus LX if you're shopping in the giant luxury SUV segment? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the 2021 Lexus LX, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should consider buying this over the competition. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like. All right, let's do this. All right, let's kick off this tour by taking a look at some of the cool and interesting things that you should know about the Lexus LX, and there aren't really a lot. Now, this is the Lexus version of the Land Cruiser, which again, we won't be getting in the United States, and that is why the Lexus LX demands such a high price tag, because the Land Cruiser and this are known for reliability and longevity. Nonetheless, at this price tag, you would expect a luxury SUV to have a lot of cool features and tech, but since this current gen has been around since 2016, this thing really is starting to show its age. But before we get into how it's showing its age, let's do a quick rapid fire session of some of the interesting things that I found in here. First up, the tire pressure monitor system will monitor the air pressure in all of your tires. No surprise there, but if you look closely, it will also monitor the tire pressure for the spare tire. That's pretty interesting. You can add a cool box in the center console as an option to keep your drinks nice and chilled. Dropping the ride height of the LX is really quick. Raising the height of the air suspension can take a minute, but the drop, I have it set here at the highest setting and I'll lower it to its lowest setting and it's done. That was very quick. Next up, since the LX is a tough off-roading machine, you have something called crawl control, which is basically really slow cruise control for when you're off-roading. You have a split gate for the tailgate. The top part is powered and automatic, but the lower part is manual. Rivals like the Range Rover and the BMW X7 also have split gates, but both the top and the lower part are automatic and powered. While I'm back here, I do want to point out that the third row doesn't fold flat, but it folds over to the side, just like the Land Cruiser. To operate the third row, you use these set of buttons right here to drop the seat backs down, and then to fold it to the side, you use another set of buttons right here. That's actually pretty cool, even though this kind of takes up some cargo area. I don't know how they're going to attack this in the new generation model. Now hop in the second row and you'll see two leather covers behind the headrest, remove them, and that will reveal two screens for the rear entertainment system. Now, you would think that these displays are touchscreen displays, but they aren't. The rear entertainment system comes with the remote control and it's a very outdated looking remote control at that. Now, let's take a look at some of the ways that LX is starting to show its age. First up, the infotainment system is pretty outdated. While most 2021 Lexus models have touchscreen displays, the LX just has the regular old display that you control 
through the mouse pad style control down here. Dig deeper into the infotainment system and you'll see that the navigation system is pretty outdated. At this point, you're probably thinking, hey, does it at least have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? No, it doesn't even have wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's just a very basic Lexus infotainment system without any bells or whistles. Let's look at the gauge cluster, which is also pretty outdated. Most automakers have switched over two digital gauge cluster displays with very beautiful screens over here. It's all traditional manual dials. You also don't get a panoramic sunroof. At $95,000, I would at least expect a second sunroof in the back for the rear passengers, but you don't, you just have this one right here. All that said, I know that there are a lot of car shoppers out there that prefer their vehicles not to have all these new gimmicks and tech in fear of them crapping out. So if you're one of those car shoppers, you'll be glad to know that you can still buy something like the Lexus LX. With that, let's talk about pricing. And you might think that this is a little bit more affordable than the competition since it doesn't have modern tech, but you'd be wrong. Pricing for the LX 572 row starts at $86,930. The three row model that I'm testing here starts at $91,930. And as tested here, you're at $98,800. And $40. So yeah, even the starting price tag of the LX is pretty much up there, but let's see what makes my test model here cost almost $99,000. And keep in mind, you can cross the $100,000 mark very easily. My test model does have three rows, so you're already starting at around $92,000. And then I have the luxury package for $1,190. And that will give you a leather trimmed interior with some nice contrast stitching. You get heated and cooled second row seats with this really nice control over here. The luxury package also gives you four zone climate control and these cool LX puddle lamps that will shine the LX logo at nighttime. As for other options, I have the Mark Levinson sound system, which is really surprisingly expensive for what it is at $2,350. The dual screen rear entertainment system will run you $2,005 and then a few other options, including this heated espresso steering wheel for $150, the cool box right here that will keep your drinks cold will cost you $170 and a wireless charger will run you $75. As for horsepower and torque, power still comes from a 5.7 liter V8 pumping out 383 horsepower and 403 pound-feet of torque. This is the last time we're going to see a V8 in the LX. The next generation model will be powered by a twin turbo V6 as seen in the new Land Cruiser. Weighing in at around 6,000 pounds, this will do zero to 60 in 7.3 seconds with a top speed of 137 miles an hour. So yeah, it's pretty heavy and not that quick. When it comes to drive modes, you're working with normal, comfort, eco, sport S, sport S plus, and then you have customize, not custom, but customize where you can set everything to your personal liking. And obviously you can imagine that the fuel economy is pretty terrible. You get 12 miles a gallon city and 16 miles a gallon highway, give a 24.6 gallon tank capacity. I'm averaging after a few days of driving a total of 15.3 miles a gallon. Let's take a look at the exterior design because not much has changed for this giant Lexus since 2016. And I really don't expect Lexus to make a huge departure from the current design because they dropped a teaser earlier this year and it seemed to have pretty much the same overall silhouette. I'm sure people are expecting a smaller grill because this giant grill is pretty controversial, but I don't think that's really gonna happen. Personally, I don't mind the giant grill. I think the Lexus LX is one of the most polarizing looking large luxury SUVs. It has a solid blend of an aggressive looking beast with a high-end luxury stature. Now really quick, during the 2020 model year, Lexus added a sport package that will give you some exclusive design elements like a sportier grill, body colored side mirrors and really nice 21 inch wheels. I don't have the sport package here, but I do want to point out that it's a little pricey at $6,110. Not only that, if you add on the sport package, Lexus forces you to add on the luxury package plus a heated wood steering wheel. So it really will cost you $7,450. Lexus for some reason does this thing where they expect you to bunch a group of packages together when adding any specific package. So always be careful when pricing one out. Now I love this Nori green pearl paint job. It's very unique and the edgiest color you can get with the LX. That said, Nori green is really only one of the four colors that you can get the Lexus LX in. Other than this, it's only available in white, silver, and black. And by the way, the reason I don't have the sport package on my test model here is because you can't get the sport package if you go for the Nori green color. I don't know why. As for cargo capacity, you can pop the trunk by using a button located right here. And once you get it opened, you have 16 cubic feet behind the third row, about 54 cubic feet behind the second row. And with both rows folded, you're working with about a massive 81 cubic feet. So it's not that bad at all. Let's take a seat inside the 2021 Lexus LX. And again, not much has changed since 2016. 
everything is really just the way it was. But I do want to point out that overall, it does still feel pretty modern in here, even though it doesn't have any modern tech. I guess it doesn't look as fancy or flashy as its rivals, but it still has a pretty modern feel to it. Also, there's no doubt that Lexus's interior quality is one of the best in the industry. Everything in here is so well put together and feels outstanding. Let's check out the second row legroom. You have 34.4 inches in the second row. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position. As you can see, not that bad at all. Once you get back here, you'll see that the center console has some climate controls for the second row passengers, but you can move this out of the way for a middle passenger to take a seat. To get into the third row, you just pull this latch right here and the second row will fold down and lift up giving you way to enter the third row. So let's get into the third row and see what kind of legroom you're working with. You have 28.3 inches of legroom back here. Now that I finally got back here, let's pull the seat down and I'm not even gonna lift that seat back up because it's not gonna work for me. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the Lexus LX stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have eight cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers two in the back for the rear passengers, kind of flimsy. And then you have two on each side for the third row passengers. Why do they need four cup holders in the back of the third row when nobody's really gonna be sitting here? Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside, not that bad. Charging game wise, it's pretty disappointing in here. You can pay extra for a wireless charger and then you just have one regular USB-A port. There are no other USB ports in this car. I looked and I looked. Second row, third row, no USB ports, just one. Very disappointing. And of course, let's do a quick indicator and horn sound test here with the 2021 Lexus LX indicator first. Pretty much a normal indicator, nothing too special here. And now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, very solid and it needs it. And now that I've given you a tour of the LX, let me give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this over the competition. All right, let's get to it. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or on TikTok, you know that I like to point out cool and interesting tech and luxury features on modern cars. But every time I do, there's always a comment that goes a little something like, oh great, more things to break and that will cost a lot of money to fix. Which leads me to believe there are a lot of car shoppers out there that don't care for bells and whistles. They just care about reliability and the dependability of maintaining their vehicles. And if you're one of those car shoppers that is concerned with those things, the Lexus LX is a great option for you because Lexus itself is so obsessed with reliability and dependability. And I honestly believe that's why they take so long to implement modern tech into their vehicles. If you want to live on the edge and get the most bang for your buck, there are much better ways to spend $98,000 in this segment. Nonetheless, I'm really interested to see what Lexus does with the next generation LX because this thing has a lot of potential for the brand and I hope they adopt some of the new modern tech that we saw in the preview of the new NX because that's probably the biggest update any Lexus has seen in quite some time. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, peace. And if you're enjoying my content, make sure you share it with your friends that also enjoy cars. Spread the word.